New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles Rosenberg's on the ESPN assignment, but he got it in when we had uh, de Blasio up here just yesterday. Jamani heard the conversation, so he came by the studio. Give it up, Jamani Williams. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all What's for talking What's your official about title this? now? Public Advocate. Public Advocate. Yeah. Official, make sure motherfuckers don't act up guy. That's a fact. Uh, making sure the agency is doing what they're supposed to do. Making sure the, the public has communication with the agencies. God forbid something happened to the mayor. I'm the next up. Next and you month. came up here today because uh, I was told that you feel like uh, the mayor is full of it with regard to what he's saying on this Eric Garner case. I, I'm disturbingly pissed off at the mayor and his handling of this case. And I wish he would just stop talking at, at a certain point. Like it's, At a certain point, it's disrespectful particularly with this case and this family, because this all lies within him. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, Officer Pantaleo chokes and kills Eric Garner. We see it on video. Mm -hmm. That's five months into de Blasio being in his first term of being president. Mayor. Uh, mayor. Or mayor. <laughs> uh, he's running for president. Um, and um, at that point, the NYPD was pissed off with de Blasio because he was siding with the family, mm -hmm. and he was siding with Eric Garner. And even saying that this was a travesty and police brutality. Yeah. and At that point, I think even Brat Bratton said something about it. Bratton right. had talked about how this was a problem. Yeah. But uh, de Blasio and, and the police commissioner at the time allowed the Department of Justice to come in and investigate this, correct? Yeah, they... They basically punted. Is is what is what's been happening for the past five years. Look, the D. I think the DOJ could have brought civil rights violations. I'm not surprised that they didn't. They had a higher bar, and people want to hear it. This wasn't just a Trump DOJ. This was Obama and yeah. Uh, was it Valerie Jarrett? Uh, Jarrett and um, Holden. So Holder. We've had so far two presidents, four attorney generals. <laughs> two of them were black. Uh, two attorney generals were black, and, and the president was black at that moment in time, right? So. The, if they didn't do it, we should know Trump wasn't going to do it. De Blasio claims that he was advised not to. No, he was not. And that's and what people are calling BS. The DOJ has told us and the family repeatedly that they did not ask the city to hold up at all. And de Blasio tried to do this on this case and the Marley Graham case. And on both cases, the DOJ said that just wasn't true. Now, the thing is. Now, who do we believe? The, the thing is this. My problem is. The way it's being pushed forward is if he had no control over anything. And that's what's frustrating me. There might be some legitimacy in saying that I can't just fire the person. Uh, but I'm saying just be like Rudy Giuliani. If you can't do that, where are we when it comes to this? The, Giuliani allowed the uh, disciplinary process to go forward and then fired Francis Lavoti, who... Now, de Blasio says that Giuliani didn't. The commissioner at the time fired Lavoti. Commissioner, mayor, however you want to want to call it, the Lavoti would not have been fired without the mayor allowing. Right, and that was the Baez case. That was Anthony Baez. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the Blazers put in James O'Neill in, in, in a very tough position. I I actually have some faith in James O'Neill. I, I I know the man. I've known him before he became commissioner. But it's really up to him now. He I, th like you. You have to. This man can no longer be. So on the Blasio the saying it's up to James O'Neill is the truth. Technically, yes. Okay, good. But like I, I challenged really de Blasio yeah. yesterday, and I said, "But he works for you." Yeah, that is a fact. So yes. now, if de Blasio said, "Do this," it would get done. That and is that's what truth. everybody's pissed about. But I also want to say this: what he absolutely had the power to do was suspend Daniel Pantaleo for up to thirty days without pay. That could have been a sign that something went wrong. In 2016, mm. there was a police officer who was caught on camera giving somebody a ticket and saying, I'm giving you this ticket because of Mayor Bill de Blasio. Within two days, that officer was suspended. Now, if you can do that for somebody giving someone a ticket and blaming the mayor, how can you not do that for someone who choked somebody to death on camera and everyone saw from the beginning to the end? My problem is he's provided no leadership on this. He's tried to punt for as long as he can, and now he's pretending like this was not in his wheelhouse. I give him some credit for finally saying I made a mistake and not uh, giving it to DOJ earlier. But you made a mistake from the beginning, not trying to take any responsibility for the disciplinary process. Did you hear our conversation with him yesterday? I did hear most did, of it. Did you feel while he was uh, avoiding, you know, actually saying what was going to happen with Officer Pantaleo and let us wait till James O'Neill? 
did you um it felt like he was taking responsibility for how long this has taken? I feel like finally there's been some responsibility that I should not have taken this long. But I, I still feel like even as saying that, he's at the same time um excusing his not taking any action at all in the five years. Got it. He's still not explaining why did you not immediately suspend this person? Why did you not make any effort to say that this well, person is not somebody should be? Well, and if we were to go deeper, be... it's political, right? Because at it, the time, that was when the NYPD was turning their backs on him. Of and he felt is. like he was losing the police. And he, that was before Jimmy O'Neill was hired, right? Yep. So he was going to make changes in the leadership there. This right he out had the... stopped or was working on uh, toning down stop and frisk. The, the right after... Uh, he said that he had to have a conversation with his son, the the conversation that anybody who has a black Latino son has, including black Latino police officers that I know. As soon as he said that and the cops, it got hot. He went another direction. That's literally what happened. So you you feel like he folded up. He got punked by the police. At that moment in time, this is my frustration. There are, and I always say there are some positive things that have happened in this police department before this administration, to this administration, it is clear. And it bothers me that we cannot spend time celebrating that and continuing it to move forward because when it comes to accountability and transparency, we have not gotten any better. And it's things like this, like why can't we talk about the fact that, uh, you know, crime is down and arrests are down and use of force is down? Like I want to talk about those things so we continue to move, move forward, but we have to talk about the fact that Daniel Pantaleo is still on the force. So you're saying you, talk about all of it. Don't try to skirt around the Pantaleo thing. That's the problem. And I, I would love to, but, but the, the weight of what you did on the Pantaleo case, on Eric Garner's case, is, is the legacy now. And that's the problem because there's so much more that we can be talking about and we should be talking about, but it's hard to go back to the streets and like talk about the positive things that are going on when I'm like, yo, you could kill people on the street and nothing will happen to you. Mm-hmm. And the mayor's not going to do anything, and the commission's not going to do anything. That's a problem. This is squarely in the wheelhouse of Mayor Bill de Blasio, how he handled this and bungled it from the beginning. And to run around the country now saying, that I'm the progressive, I want to do for the country what I did for New York City is hard to swallow. Because you didn't finish. Exactly. You didn't close. That's exactly right. And now, um, do we think it will close? How do we think... This Garner case closes in 30 days. You know, he seemed like he had a lot of faith. I actually, mm. as, I, as I mentioned, I have faith in, in James O'Neill. Um, and I, I, I really, but I, I don't know how to tell people to hold your breath on it. Like, I just, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's too, very difficult. We've been disappointed too many yeah. times. It, it's a lot. And I, and I don't want it to be like, okay, there's a lot of political pressure. This is not about politics. This is about, I was about to curse, can't call somebody. This is about what people saw on video from the beginning to the end. That's all this is about. Don't try to say you're not going to listen to politicians. You're a politician. And you, politics have swayed decisions you've made. This is about what everybody saw. If you have the New York Post saying that somebody should be fired, and you have a, there's a problem. It's just you and Pat Lynch and the PBA are the only ones who seem to be on the same side. The New York Post. That's crazy. It's saying that Pantaleo I mean, should not city, be the city didn't the city medical examiner rule that a homicide? <laughs> the, 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 the city does. Um, that in and of, of itself, technically speaking, it could be a homicide. And I don't want to get too technical. But, yes, the city did say it was a homicide a long time ago. Um, but everybody knows what – even the DOJ and their crazy behinds said that there was a chokehold. It just wasn't a chokehold after he said, I can't breathe. Like, I don't even know what that means. Now you're just splitting hairs. I don't even know what that means. Everybody saw what happened, knows what happened, and knows why Eric gone. And we're still looking for the cigarettes. Where are the cigarettes, you say he was Well, saying? they lied about that. that yeah, I thought yeah. that was documented that the police officers lied in the report. They lied that. in the report. Yeah. By I the thought way, that was documented. It is documented. Okay. By the way, we only focus on Pantaleo. There was other officers there that we can't even get to them. What did they do? People lying on a report is a problem. Police officers lying on... And that has happened... Many times the report came out that officers that's been have happening lied. For generations. And that's crazy. Like, this is what we have to get to the root of accountability and transparency. Those are the, the two two baskets where we're not doing the movement. And so the, the uh, neighborhood policing is awesome. All the other initiatives, the retraining is awesome. I don't want to take away from that. That did happen on the Bill de Blasio's watch, and I wanted to give him credit. But if we're not going to move on those two buckets, transparency and you accountability. You got to close. You got to close. You got to close out. You got to close out, and that's a big out. problem. You got to close um, out. Do you, um, in your role uh, as um, 
do you pay attention to what's going on with Ocasio Cortez? And is that how does that world function at the federal level and local politicians at the federal level? How does that all work? I absolutely around? pay attention. I'm very proud uh, of uh, Ocasio Cortez. I'm very proud of uh, the direction that this comp. I'm, I'm glad that someone like her and others are able to push back. I'm glad that this direction was going that way. But even now, when we have that orange man in the White House, the um, occupant, they're calling it. It's it's crazy. Like if you had written this script, nobody would film this movie. It's just too outlandish. Well, no, it would be on Netflix. It would, <laughs> this it would. movie, nah. You can't have a president telling people to go, Congress members telling them to go back to their country, having a a a a, a rally where people are screaming, send her back, having people in camps in inhumane conditions. The president of the United States doing it. That nobody would nobody would film that movie. It would, like it's it doesn't sound. Plausible in 2019. I don't think anybody would have thought to have filmed the movie. I actually think if somebody thought to film the movie, they would make the movie. <laughs> I just don't think anybody would have thought that it could actually be this way. The thing is, and, uh, you know, me as a conspiracy theorist, we've actually talked in circles about it being this way. And people always said I was crazy, especially Laura and them. And now <laughs> simultaneously, you have babies being stolen at the border. That's crazy. Politicians, elected officials who happen to be Muslim and black and African being told to go back to their country. You got black and Latino uh, elected officials who are American being told to go back no, to their country. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More American than his wife. Yes, absolutely. More American than him. Yes, they've been here longer. They've been here longer. Go back to your country. What are you, like, what's happening right now? And I don't think people understand the gravity of how dangerous that is. All this stuff happening simultaneously. I at the think same there time. are people who do, and there's too many who don't. The, the problem is not Trump. The problem is the millions of people who still support him and elected officials. Like, but who, that's a part it? of the American fabric. It's yeah. just now been emboldened yeah. and brought to the forefront. And that's important. I always tell folks, don't act like this is this is very American. This isn't the DNA of America. Yeah, uh, those people didn't just flip and all of a sudden nah, become Trump supporters. There. That they've been like this. That's why they're so passionate and connected. They're deeply connected. And people used to tell us we're crazy when we're saying, "Oh, this is a problem." Oh no, we're past it now. No, we've never been fully past it like that. You just didn't have the dude in the White House with the bullhorn. Like at least they would yeah. try to coat it too. You're not even gonna try to hide it. I see, I see your nose. I see what's. Mm -hmm. Like you're not even gonna try to hide what you're doing, and that that's the dangerous part. But I always say, there's another part of America that has always pushed back, and I'm proud to be that part of America. That, and how do you back. feel um, the pushback is going? Because now you have I don't know the lady's name, oh. uh, but uh, she's a Jamaican uh, yeah. woman. Her, her name uh, is uh, Sherry Murray. Yeah. She's saying that uh, she uh, she's taking. There's four Republicans yeah. now that are being financed mm -hmm. because keep in mind if everybody's not watching the chessboard, Ocasio Cortez's responsibility as an elected official is to the 14th district right. here in New York State. At, she was elected by was that Elmhurst, uh, the the East Bronx, yeah. Um, which includes, I think, Rikers Island is in there. Yeah, they don't vote. And, but they don't Flushing. vote, but I'm just saying it's that yeah. section of the city. Yeah. Flushing is in there too, right? Flushing, Flushing I think yeah, so yeah. too. Um, but she is so loud on a national level and so powerful that Republicans are figuring out a way to find Republicans in her district to run against her. Mind you, the district is 50% Latino. I think it's like 16% Asian and like 11% black. So it's like, what is that? I don't know. My math is terrible. 90%. 90% Asian, black, and Latino. And they're out here, not that there aren't people You know the numbers are, good, man. I just was looking at it because I was trying to understand who this lady was. Like, where'd you come from? She's a, I think she's a, a, a Republican district leader out there uh, also. So she's been, you know, peripherally involved on the Republican side. I'm so, I'm sure they're gonna try to make her a Republican darling because she's black, she's female, Absolutely. and she's Caribbean. Uh, I think it's sad. To, to see her try to uh, go against uh, a, a, another uh, woman of more color. But, you know, the the systems of inequity and, and inequality, the systems of privilege, they're not just going to go out like that. So when you have uh, Ocasio, who is the better part of this country, uh, always pushing back and holding up people's voice needs to be hold, held up. No place in this world where people are pushing back against the the forces of inequity are, are just allowed to just speak like that. Something's going to happen. So they're going to try to take her out. And I hope the people of Queens, I believe the people of Queens won't let that happen. And I think, you know, I think the main lesson there 
um, you know, former Congressman Crowley, just ignore the district. I don't think uh, Ocasio is doing it. I don't think she's ignoring the district. We've so. actually started doing research on initiatives that she has uh, supported for her district to find out over the last... I mean, it's only been 24 months at yeah. this point, right? Yeah. And since she's been in office, to see what those initiatives are and ha how has things improved for business owners, homeowners, residents of her district. And I've seen her in the district. And so I always... You always want to hold... I, I hold was, was elected officials... Depending where they are on three things, how many laws have you passed and how much money have you brought back and how have you used your voice to elevate the issues of your district? She's definitely used her voice. We know and, that. And so it's hard. It's probably hard to get a law passed now in this environment. It could still be done. And they don't have discretionary funds the way they did as well. And so I just want to make sure we're holding people responsible based on the position they have at that moment in time. And so I think I think she's doing really well. Being present in the district is critically important. Constituency service is is critically important. Raising the issues and using your voice is critically important. And people, it's amazing. People want to bash her for uh, being uh, a national voice. That just sounds like hate to me. Um, on a local level, De Blasio's job is up when twenty twenty one. Um, I, unless he is elected president, I might say. right. Uh, but locally, yeah. who is going to be the next mayor of the city? I don't know. Um, there's a lot of folks running. Are you running? I'm not running. Nobody believes me, but <laughs> I'm not running. I ran to be public advocate. Uh, I'm good shouting from... All right, is there here. anybody that you think has done work out here that deserves... I think a lot of folks... I, I got to be careful what I say because anything I say, people listen. Okay, okay, fair but enough. I know there's a lot of folks out there, Speaker Corey Johnson, um, Scott Stringer, um, uh, Ruben Diaz from the Bronx... Eric Adams from uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, all out there. I heard that the former speaker, Christine Quinn, is exploring it. So there's a lot of folks out there. I think there's somebody out there that nobody's even thinking of that's going to come in Galvanize and shake it up. the city. Yeah, I, think, I think that might happen. So we, we got we to gotta wait and see. But I mean, there's, that, that crew, I've been, I've been pressing different ways uh, for, for many of them. Uh, so we'll see. But it is, it is going to be critical. You know, I'm, I'm worried about my election in November, my re-election in two years. Um, and uh, the MTA has announced they're firing 2,700 people or may maybe firing. Is that right? I've heard that. What's most insulting to me is the way Cuomo is treating Andy Byford and, and, and treating the MTA like his personal fiefdom. It's just very disturbing to see. Uh, most of the problems that we have here are as a result of the lack of leadership from Andrew Cuomo, period. And transportation issues, I had to, you know, I traveled across the state. The issues we face in New York, are the same issues I see in Buffalo, Syracuse, and across the state. And everybody blames Albany, and everybody looks at this governor. He did an op-ed, which was poking at uh, what's happening in New York City, and is Bill de Blasio progressive and all this. But he neglected to say all the issues are happening across. In Syracuse, there's lead poisoning that's worse than what's happening in Flint. That wow. is not New York Whoa. City. That is the governor, and and that's happening from Albany. So I just want to make sure I make that clear. Um, but some of the restructuring I actually like... Um, I don't like the fact that they're trying to take some more power away from Andy Byford. I don't agree with everything he did. But now, he's who's actually this doing person? A pretty, Andy Byford was brought in to uh, change up the... Uh, the um, That's the Englishman? Or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's been doing a pretty decent job. I don't agree with everything. Um, I think uh, I don't like the fact that they're, they're bringing more police in uh, to summons and arrest folks for, for, for jumping the turnstile. People get angry. But the truth is... That's the only transportation point where we do that. They don't do that for people who uh, don't pay their tolls. Wait, who gets angry? Are, are people like me. Like, why? The, most of the folks who jump a turnstile are black, Latino, and Yeah, they're folks. doing that. I thought you were saying people are getting angry that they was jumping turnstiles. No, they I don't know angry. anybody who gets mad at somebody But they're bringing turnstiles. police in. Yeah, no, they shouldn't do that. But they don't do that at the toll bridges. No. They don't do that for the people who are abusing placards. These are all transportation-related crimes and theft of services. But again, the only people who get the heat for doing the same crime are black and Latinos. But beside that, they, I think he's doing a decent job, and we should allow him to do that job. Uh, uh, trains are more on time now, exponentially, than they were before. I think there's a decent plan there. We should allow him to do the job. But Cuomo doesn't like when people are, are I think, doing things better than him. And so I think he's trying uh, to weaken uh, his position there. My hope is that he just sits through it, and stays. Uh, but I, I am glad to see the MTA and the board finally putting out a plan um, to restructure how this thing's going because they've been failing for far, for far too long. And that's the transportation. This city is the city it is for two reasons. They found a way to build up and the transportation system. You take away any one of those, and the city is not the city. Um, do you... Um 
Do you anticipate uh, this queen? What's going on with the Queen's DA thing? Tiffany uh -huh. Caban and Katz. Versus Melinda Katz. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's crazy. I, it, obviously, Tiffany did a, a, a bang-up job. Nobody even expected that. Um, but we have some some attorneys uh, going down just to look at the recount. Um, from what I've seen, I mean, I've, I've heard both sides kind of screaming and yelling. But I have to say, from what I've seen and the feedback I've got, it's been transparent. Uh, I, I've seen you know, an open process, which is good. I uh, hope that's what continues. There is one place that people, everybody should be concerned about, uh, which is the affidavit votes. And the affidavit votes, I think, are not being treated the way they should be. What's an affidavit vote? Um, so there are paper ballots. So there, there were absentee ballots, which people handed in before the date. Because Residents they knew they that okay. live there but are somewhere else, they sent them in. Yes. And then there are affidavit or emergency ballots where you went and they couldn't find your name for whatever reason. Oh, that reason. happened to me. Yeah. That happened to me. So they recently. will say, we'll give you a paper ballot, an emergency ballot, an affidavit ballot. You vote, and then your vote will be counted. That's what we tell people. Uh, it usually only comes to play in close elections like this, and then you find out, oh, your vote may not have been counted. And so there's a bunch of people who signed, who, who did affidavit ballot, thousands that they've just knocked out for, for many reasons. And there's a few... And those are the ones that Tiffany's complaining about because she feels like those were new voters and people who may have not, you know, gotten their information in that probably voted for her. It did... It, it, conventional wisdom was that the, the absentee ballots might lean uh, uh, cats because they're older and oh, cats reached out to her. It did seem that some of the... The affidavits might lean to bond because they're younger and uh, that may help. But we don't know. But what people should not argue about is, is that if you, and there's about 114 or maybe a little bit more of these type of affidavit votes, but if you went to your poll site and you are a registered Democrat and you went to vote in a Democratic Party, your vote should count. And there's 100 or so ballots that that happened. Like I went to my right poll site. I went in the Democratic Party and I am a registered Democrat and they're not counting my vote. And what's more disturbing is the complication. Like, it's difficult to understand how that ballot works when you have to fill it up. There's two places where you have to write that you're a Democrat and check off the Democratic Party. And if you don't do that, your vote don't count. Mm. And I saw one ballot where the brother wrote Democrat and forgot to check Democrat, and his vote's not counting. That's absurd. That makes no sense. That's a technicality. These are technicalities yes. now. And even worse, although the law is clear that you have to fill it out right, BOE, Board of Election Policy, is that it is the poll site's responsibility to make sure that they give you the accurate instructions and you fill it out properly. And when you hand it back, that they look at it yes. and go, you missed this. Yes. Now, that didn't happen. Now, how are you going to blame? Like, that? everyone should agree that if you are a legally registered Democrat in Queens, you went to your correct poll site, and you were voting in the Democratic Party, that there shouldn't be technicalities that knock your vote out. And that's the thing that concerns me the most here, is making sure that those affidavits uh, vote. There is some question, there's, I mean, obviously there's a lot of folks, there's a lot of them that just weren't filled out properly, people who were not on the rolls, people who were not registered properly. And frankly, some people didn't go even to the right poll site, things like that. There's questions about which poll site. I always thought if you went to the right county, you should be all right. But even that aside, let's knock those out. These 114 or so, you, you can't, disenfranchise these voters because they didn't check off one of the boxes that say Democrat in the Democratic Party, which they're registered to vote. It just yeah. makes no sense. Um, and one last thing before we let you go. Thank you for your time today. Thank are you. you aware that kids joyriding city bikes are getting charged with felonies? Oh, no, I did not know that. What's happening right now? We've been told <laughs> that if you get caught joyriding a city bike because of the price of the city bike... Oh. It's like 1200 or 1800 They're like charging that. kids with felonies. I've also been told that the NYPD has even gone to the city bike people and asked them to lower the price. Wow. And city bike has not done it. And they just extended the service, I believe, to the Bronx. Where it's coming yeah, they're coming to, the they, 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 they finally get into other so bikes. If you could. Yeah, that's a problem. Well, I, I got to say. See, I'm, because here it goes. Yeah. You know, when you dock it, yeah. it ain't, if it don't lock, kids are walking by it and just seeing it. Being if, kids, they being kids. And, oh, it's loose. This good, yeah, yeah. Rolling yeah, yeah. out, right? And maybe I don't have train fare. Yeah. So I'm about to ride this bike. That way I ain't got to jump a turn. But turn it's step. even as easy. Have you used one before? Yeah. So the first time, my very first time I used it, I didn't dock it in completely. I didn't lock it in. I didn't even know that you, the light's supposed to come on. I just kind of like pushed it in. So someone can make that simple mistake as a first time user and then you're responsible for that bike. I will say I'm very happy to hear you say NYPD has gone 
That's what That's I'm some, told. I'm going to give some credit. But, you know, well, we have a tendency to criminalize adolescents in black and brown communities. Like... In you, cities, period. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, you see a loose bike and you're 16... That's a that's a free ride. Like that's yeah. what that is. Like, I don't yeah. understand. It, like that we can't criminalize a felony for that. Yeah. Well, and it's because of the price of the bike. Yeah, we got we got to figure that out. So it falls it falls in a, a price. Of, what is it? I think it's like two thousand dollars or something. Yeah, but why is it not the price of how much it would have cost you to get it? Why right. is it the price of the bike? Are they saying you stole a bike? Right. Mm-hmm. It's basically nah. the property value. Uh, that sounds. So I'm just saying yeah. that's the that's the new rigor. Yeah, we're going to figure that out. We'll figure that out. <laughs> Yo, Jamani Williams, man, public advocate in New York City. Always love having you on the show. Appreciate you, Y'all man. Y'all give it up. Jamani Williams, Peace, peace, man. peace.